Hey everyone. In today's video, we're exploring the VWAP and DMI indicator combination. We'll walk through the whole process, explaining how the strategy works and running back tests to see how it performs. Before diving into the strategy, let's start by breaking down the key indicators we'll be using. This strategy runs on the one hour time frame, so let's open the chart and add the indicators. The setup uses only two free TradingView tools, and I'll explain how each one works as we add them step by step. For our first indicator, we're introducing the rolling VWAP, which stands for Volume Weighted Average Price. This indicator is designed to show the average price of an asset, weighted by volume, over a specific window. In simple terms, it helps us understand whether price is trading above or below the fair value based on recent trading activity. In the Input tab, we set the minimum window size, bars, to 200. That means the VDU app will calculate using at least the last 200 bars, giving us a smoother and more reliable line instead of reacting too quickly to short-term price noise. Buy and sell signals are determined by the crossovers between price and the VBU app line. When the price crosses above the VBU app, it suggests buyers are taking control and momentum is shifting upward, which can be used as a potential buy signal. When the price crosses below the VW AP, it indicates selling pressure and a possible shift to the downside, which can be used as a sell signal. However, we can't rely on VU app alone because price can cross above and below multiple times, leading to many false signals. That's why we add our second indicator, the DMI, or Directional Movement Index. This tool helps us confirm whether the market is actually trending before taking trades. The DMI is an indicator used to measure trend strength and identify whether buyers or sellers are in control of the market. It consists of three lines, plus DI, positive directional indicator, minus DI, negative directional indicator, ADX, average directional index. We'll be using the default setting of 14. First, let's head to the Style tab. Uncheck ADX for now, so we can focus on the two lines, plus DI and minus DI. These two lines help us understand directional bias. When plus DI is above minus DI, it means buyers have more strength and the market is leaning bullish. When minus DI is above plus DI, sellers are stronger and the market is leaning bearish. We'll use this as our first filter to determine whether we only look for long setups or short setups. Next, go back to Style, uncheck the two DI lines, and check ADX instead. The ADX measures the strength of the trend regardless of direction. When ADX is above 20, it means the market is trending and signals are more reliable. When ADX is below 20, the market is moving sideways. So we try to avoid taking trades because signals tend to be choppy and less effective. Now that we understand how each indicator works, let's walk through how we combine them to identify trade setups. To enter a long trade, we need all of the following conditions to be met. First, we look for the price to cross above the VWAP. This indicates that buyers are gaining control and the price is moving above its volume weighted fair value, a potential shift into bullish momentum. Second, we need to see the positive directional indicator above the negative directional indicator. This tells us that upward directional movement is stronger than downward movement, confirming that the market bias is bullish. Third, we check that the ADX is above 20, because this confirms that the market is actually trending. When ADX is below 20, price tends to chop sideways, which leads to unreliable signals, so we only take trades when a trend is present. Once all three conditions are aligned, we open a long position on the next candle. To give the trade some breathing room and avoid being stopped out by normal market fluctuations, we place our stop loss by subtracting 2.5 times the average true range, ATR, from the closing price of the signal candle. For our take profit, we use a 3 to 1 reward to risk ratio. This means that once any candle closes at or above our target level, we immediately exit the trade and secure the profits. To enter a short trade, we look for the opposite signals. One, price crosses below the VWAP, showing sellers are taking control. Two, minus DI is above plus DI, confirming stronger bearish directional movement. Three, ADX is above 20, 
indicating the market is trending and signals are more reliable. When all three conditions line up, we open a short position on the next candle. For the stop loss, we add 2.5 times ATR to the closing price of the signal candle. For take profit, we use a 3 to 1 reward to risk ratio, exiting the trade once price reaches the target level. Now that we understand the strategy, let's move on to optimization using FreckTrade, an open source trading bot. If you want a full beginner friendly FreckTrade tutorial, make sure to check the link in the description. The main parameters we'll optimize include trend filter enabled, whether to use the 200 EMA, VWAP cross window, how long a VWAP cross remains valid, while ADX waits to confirm. ADX threshold, the minimum level needed to confirm a strong trend. Risk ratio and ATR multiplier. These define the stop loss distance and the reward to risk ratio, which control overall trade management. We'll use FreckTrade's Hyperopt to find the best combination of these parameters for the strongest performance. Once optimization is finished, we'll run a full backtest using the optimal settings to see how the strategy performs. All right, let's take a closer look at the backtesting results. We tested the strategy on STX Perpetual Futures using the one hour time frame over the past year with the optimized settings. Here's what we found. The strategy achieved a total return of 444%. In comparison, the market returned about negative 59% during the same period. The maximum drawdown was 25%, showing that while the strategy experienced some pullbacks, it handled risk well and stayed consistently profitable. Next, we'll take a look at a visual summary of these results. As a reminder, the strategy was optimized using eight months of in-sample data, then validated with four months of out-of-sample data. This ensures the performance isn't just curve-fitted and can actually hold up in real market conditions. If you'd like access to the full strategy file, along with the complete step-by-step -step Freck Trade tutorial. It's available to supporters through the link in the description. There's also a pair-optimized version, which allows you to run the strategy across multiple trading pairs, each with its own optimized parameters for even better performance. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and share it with anyone who might benefit from it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.